to prepare some mammalian cell culture media and I'm not adding antibiotics. A lot of people routinely add antibiotics like pen strep to their media prophylactically, so basically just to prevent bacterial growth, but it actually probably does more harm than good. So they're growing calls to stop doing this and here's why. Not only should antibiotics be unnecessary if you are using good aseptic or like sterile techniques, but they can actually cause harm. They can hide low levels of contamination, allow you to be culturing contamination throughout your lab. Um, they can affect, actually affect how these cells are expressing or making different proteins and when affecting the cellular survival, their differentiation. So how they're like specializing into other cells and they can promote the rise of antimicrobial resistance. And so we'll get more into each of these things. But let me start by clarifying that I'm talking about prophylactic use. So I'm talking about the use of these like just in case. So there are occasions that we'll get into when it's actually important to use antibiotics. Some of these are for selection of cells that have taken in a plasmid or integrated some sort of DNA. Um, we can use selection similarly to how we use it in bacteria, except here we're using it to select for like human cells or mammalian cells rather than select for bacteria. We can also um, use antibiotics to actually treat infected cells. So that's okay. Treating them is okay, and it can sometimes rescue them. But what we don't want to be doing is typically is using them prophylactically. So when we don't have a bacterial infection, we're just trying to prevent one from occurring. Sometimes, however, we do use it um, for prophylactic use if we have a really precious cell line. That the risks of having some... Um, off-target effects or having some issues with the cell culture um, are less than the risks of actually losing that cell line. And we'll talk about some strategies you can use to try to still prevent any sort of artifacts or, or things like this from occurring. But let's start with going back and talking more about these specific effects. So people often add these antibiotics under the assumption that it won't have any effect, um, and if there's if there's no bacteria present, so better safe than sorry, right? But you're not safe for them either. You just have different threats, at least for the most part. Um, there's also threats from resistant bacteria that you have to worry about in either case. So some of the most um, common bacteria that we worry about in the lab are going to be mycoplasma, which are these little bacteria that you can't even like see and um, they kind of hide out and they're going to be resistant to a lot of the antibiotics that we typically use in our cell culture. And so even if you did add them, it wouldn't help, but you'd get a false sense of security. Um, and so if you're using antibiotics, it might be tempting to get a little sloppy and to not worry quite as much about your sterile, sterile technique, because if you slip up, um, then it might, it might seem like no biggie because the antibiotics can take care of it, right? But if you're just using, if you're using these antibiotics and they're not killing all of the bacteria, you, you can have, is you can have a low level of contamination that can be masked. And so you're going to keep growing those contaminated cells, thinking that they're fine. Um, and not only is this bad for your cells to be living in this environment where there's bacteria, which could be affecting things, but it's also bad for others in the lab, other plates of your own dishes and other plates of other people's dishes. Um, if basically you're not careful, really, really careful with your sterile technique, and they're not really, really careful with their sterile technique, now what's happening is you're allowing that bacteria to propagate, you're allowing it to grow for longer at these low levels, um, and potentially spreading it throughout your lab. Additionally, allowing this low level of growth of these bacteria is going to promote the rise of antibiotic resistance because it's going to select for bacteria that have the a certain um, resistant qualities. Basically how it works is that antibiotics are gonna target key bacterial assets. So for example, one of the common antibiotics we use in the lab for mammalian cells is actually a mixture of two antibiotics, it's penstrep. Um, so penicillin, which is going to target the cell wall, as well as streptomycin, which is going to target translation. So the making of proteins. And bacteria can evolve resistance, can acquire resistance to these mechanisms of the antibiotics by doing things like altering the drug 
um, pumping the drug out or actually changing themselves so that the drug doesn't, doesn't bind to them. And if we have a, a bacteria that ran, has a random mutation that causes it, so they have some of that resistance, what can happen is that now that bacteria has a growth advantage in the presence of the antibiotic, but not in the absence of the antibiotic. So in the presence of the antibiotic, that bacteria is going to be allowed to grow. Um, and when this bacteria is growing, but the other ones are getting killed off, well, now you're increasing the proportion of the cells in your culture that are actually resistant. And they're going to be able to survive. And especially if you were to stop the antibiotics, well, now the cell, those cells um, can really thrive, leading to a large population of resistant cells. Not only is this a problem in your cell culture, it's also a problem like in the wild and outside of the lab. Antimicrobial resistance or AMR is a huge global problem. So let's not make it worse. Let's not, let's not promote the rise of this, these resistant bacteria, shall we? And finally, antibiotics can actually affect gene expression. So what proteins are getting made where and when, as well as proliferation, so how fast cells are growing, and differentiation, basically how they grow up to become more specialized type of cells. So how, say, you go from, from being a stem cell or a stem cell-like cell um, to being something like a neuron or a heart cell. Um, a couple of papers that kind of highlight this are going, there's this paper where what they did was they treated cells with penicillin streptomycin, so that pen strep, or without any antibiotics. And then they looked to see what RNAs were being made, so what like messenger RNAs, so what genes were being expressed um, in a couple of different ways, both by looking at the RNA and well as looking at the accessibility um, and regions of activity on the DNA itself. And they found that a lot of the genes were um, differentially regulated, so the cells seemed to be kind of like stressed out in the presence of the antibiotic. Um, and they were actually able to show that you get correlation between these um, different methods of measuring it. Um, so it seemed like it was really legit. Um, they're not the only paper to have found differences. Um, so here's a review article showing some of the kind of differences that were found with the use of different antibiotics and different cell lines. So you can see that a lot of them are anti-proliferative, so they can prevent the cells from growing. Um, induce apoptosis, so basically cause these cells to kill themselves. Um, some of them are going to induce changes in gene expression, things like this. And so basically there's a lot of things that can happen too in your cells, even though these bacteria are going to be, tar these antibiotics target bacteria, they can have these off-target effects on the cells that you're growing as well. Um, and this can mask the true experimental results or make it difficult to compare between studies. So when we're talking about prophylactic use, so kind of like the just-in-case use, we want to avoid that for mammalian cell culture for the most part. But there are times when it's okay to use antibiotics. One of these cases is in the selection of cells. And here we're talking about the selection of cells, not the selection of bacteria. With bacterial growth, we basically include antibiotics whenever we stick in a plasmid so that we make sure that only the bacteria that take in the plasmid grow. In bacteria, that plasmid is going to be replicated, so it's going to be um, copies of it will be made and it'll be passed on. In the case of a mammalian cell, if you just stick a plasmid in the cell, it's not going to get replicated. It's not going to get passed on. Instead, it's just going to get diluted out. And so instead of actually just treating the cells to select for the ones that have taken in that plasmid, what we typically do is we just try to add a bunch of the plasmid so that more all the cells will take it in, or at least a high proportion of the cells will take it in. And then we can use things like um, screening markers. Maybe we have it co-expressed GFP or something so we can see that we did transfect things, but we're not actually adding antibiotics in order to do selection um, because that plasmid, like we said, is going to kind of like get diluted out over time anyway. But if we want to make it so that only cells that have actually integrated that um, genetic information, so they've actually 
taken the gene, um, the one you want, as well as the antibiotic resistance gene and integrated it into their own DNA. Um, so through methods like homologous recombination, where basically if there are regions that look similar, these cells can kind of merge those regions together um, in these rare events that end up with the DNA being integrated or there are viral integration methods that can help make this more likely. But in those cases, you're gonna have antibiotic resistance long-term and therefore you can use the selection strategy in order to select for cells that have like stably integrated it. So we call this like stable transfection. So that's one case where you might be using antibiotic selection in mammalian cells, but you're not using it prophylactically in that case, you're actually using it for selection. There are also times when you might use antibiotics in order to induce gene expression, such as with the TET um, inducible promoter system, where basically you have these cells make this TET repressor protein and you stick the binding site for that TET repressor in front of a gene or um, that you want to kind of control the expression of. And now, at least in the TET on system, when you add tetracycline or you add some sort of other, do you add doxycycline or some other tetracycline antibiotic, that will bind to that TET repressor, cause it to fall off and allow your gene to be expressed. So that's one use of antibiotics. But in this case, again, it's not a prophylactic use. It's using it to actually manipulate the system. Another way you might use antibiotics that, again, is not prophylactic, so it's not just in case, but it's actually using them as a treatment. So we can treat contaminated cells in order to try to rescue them. So if you have cellular contamination, especially if these are an important cell line, you can try to treat and rescue those cells by treating them with antibiotics. Sometimes antibiotics are used briefly when starting a new cell line. Um, for example, you might put them in the PBS. So this basically this phosphate buffered saline. It's this salt water um, that you use to wash the tissue when you're starting a new line in order to nip any problems in the bud when it comes to bacterial growth. Um, so start things out with a clean slate, but then don't keep the antibiotics in the media for long term. Sometimes you do, however, use antibiotics prophylactically. So you do use it for that just in case um, case when you have when the risks of losing a precious cell line are so high that the risks of the prophylactic use are worth it. If you do have to use antibiotics prophylactically, what's best is if you split the plate. So basically, when you're when we say split the plate, you take the cells that are kind of like starting to overgrow the plate and you split those cells up onto multiple plates. Um, so you dilute them and split them up. And we call that splitting or passaging. When you do this, what you can do is you can kind of passage it so that you have two, two growths going in parallel. And so one of them will have the antibiotic and one of them won't. This way, if there's a problem, if there's some sort of contamination, you're gonna be able to see it in the plates with the, without the antibiotics. Um, but not the plate with the antibiotics. And that will tell you that you might have some low level contamination in your plates with the antibiotics as well. You can also keep those cultures with antibiotics as a kind of safety net so that if something happens to your plates without antibiotics, you'll have those cells to go back to. And this, this is true for even if you're not using um, antibiotics prophylactically, you should always store stockpiles of cells from an early passage in order to go back to in case something happens. Or just because you don't want to keep going for a ton of ton of passages because these cells can be acquiring mutations each time they divide. But in terms of the prophylactic use, um, you basically... If possible, you want to grow the cells for a couple of passages or at least a couple of media changes before you run any experiment. So even if you have been growing them in the presence of antibiotics, now if you remove the antibiotics, remember that any bacteria low-level contamination that you had is going to be allowed to grow now. Um, this is going to expose it. Um, and it's also going to, not having the antibiotics is going to mean you're not going to have those effects on the cellular expression and things like this that could mess up your results. So by allowing these cells to kind of adapt to the absence of the antibiotics, well, now you're going to have a more realistic conditions in which to run your experiment. And if something goes wrong, you have those cells that you can go back to.
So to summarize, don't use antibiotics routinely in your cell media. There are some, at least for mammalian cell culture. Remember, this is not like bacterial cell culture where we're selecting for bacteria we want to grow. In mammalian cell culture, we're kind of relying on our sterile technique to make it so that only those cells that we want to grow are going to be present, which is why it's important that we use that sterile technique. And if we do use that sterile technique, then we have no need for the antibiotics. And adding them can actually do harm. It can hide low-level contamination, allowing it um, your cells contaminated growth to grow throughout your clean lab. Um, this low level of growth can also promote the rise of antimicrobial resistance, so like antibiotic resistant bacteria, which is already a huge global problem. And these antibiotics can be a problem for your cells, cause them to um, grow slowly to express different genes at different times and things like this. So it's not like a um, no big deal. It's not like a, what's the risk? Um, there are risks and hopefully I've helped you see them.